no reaction from the yuan today. It is more symbolic than significant. Um, well, I think actually it will deter some speculators. Um, I mean, it is a clear signal that the um, the PBOC will step in if they do actually believe that speculation is driving this appreciation. Um, and actually, if we go further ahead, we actually do think, unlike some others, that we um, will actually start to see a depreciation in the one going forward. What are the measures? Can the PBOC implement, Sean? Well, I mean, there's two factors. I mean, one, they could actually, we could see further moves in uh, raising this reserve requirement. Um, but actually, its fundamentals are, uh, is really behind why we actually think we could actually see, in the second half at least, some depreciation. And that is because it's going to be a stronger US dollar backdrop. And so that's going to be really the key driver, I think, going forward of, for the Huang. Yeah, talk us a little through, you're still maintaining your forecast, uh, six and a half. Uh, 6.5 for the renminbi. Everyone's saying that, well, not everyone, almost everyone that we talk to say, look, we're, we're still seeing record inflows into Chinese markets. You have the stronger renminbi that's feeling that that yield premium over the rest of the world will will remain high. Why stick to that kind of forecast? Well, because we think if we go into the second half with stronger U.S. growth, because obviously we do have that sort of fiscal stimulus, that actually means that the growth differential will narrow between China and the U.S. And that's primarily the reason why we think we're going to have broadly a stronger U.S. dollar, uh, and therefore we'll also have be able to have a sort of a depreciation in this one. And just talking through the manufacturing numbers that we saw out of China, you're starting to see the effects of, of soaring input prices, that's starting to hit some of these smaller factories in the mainland, and, and growth perhaps is, is peaking now, Sean. How concerning is that? Well, I suppose in two, there's two ways to look at it. I mean, definitely we're reaching the peak in terms of year and year because we're going to be getting less of that sort of base effects. Um, but actually, sequential growth should actually move to a more sustainable basis as we go forward. And actually, the manufacturing num uh, PMI wasn't actually that bad. I mean, it was a shorter month. Um, but, you know, clearly, as you said, we are seeing some short-term headwinds, notably in terms of those supply um, chain disruptions. Non-manufacturing PMI was pretty uh, encouraging. Will that be the growth uh, factor going forward, you think? Well, we are looking for some rotation to move more towards the consumption and the private investment. That, that's definitely for sure. And that's why the PMI, as you said, was quite encouraging. Uh, in fact, actually, if we look at sort of the spending um, during the sort of the global, uh, the golden week, um, that was about 80 percent of um, not 2019 numbers. So it was a good number going forward. Uh, it really will matter in terms of vaccination and confidence of whether or not we're going to see consumption really be able to sort of pick up sequentially.